This time on Low Boost, we do a radiator upgrade and our C5 Corvette track car. All right, so in preparing the, the C5 for the track season, it needs some upgrades uh, in the cooling category as well, uh, coolant and oil. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna upgrade the radiator, but I'm also chasing an oil leak that's coming from somewhere. So I'm gonna try to look at the most common problems first. Uh, so I took the intake off and I'm gonna look at the oil pressure sensor. So tell me what you guys think. Well, this car sat outside at some point in its life and I made sure to put some rags so nothing else goes down there, but it's damp back there and all gunky. I mean, while I'm back here, I should probably replace the oil pressure sending unit. I'm not sure if that's exactly where all the oil leak is coming from. There is just stuff everywhere and it could just be from it being really, really old. So it's gonna get cleaned up no matter what. All right, so in addition to inspecting the oil leak, the big, big upgrade that I gotta do here is the radiator. The car just overheats on track. It's just not working out well for me. I can't even be out there as long as I want to and that is more important than actually adding a ton of power, even though I'm gonna do that too. So first off, we're gonna remove the radiator shroud. Uh, four bolts here, one, two, and on the other side, and this thing just basically pops right off and then exposes our itsy bitsy skinny radiator. Yuck. Now, if you can tell just by looking at the stock one, obviously the chambers are big on either side, but the actual core itself is really tiny. And we have a lot of room to actually add more cores to this thing and make it better. Plus, we're gonna be able to keep the fan too. So next is gonna be removing our hoses, draining the coolant, and uh, disconnecting the radiator itself, and then pulling it up and out of the car. I am gonna keep the air conditioning because uh, I still street drive this thing. So I am gonna do that, but while I'm at it, I'm gonna clean everything out uh, to make sure everything is flowing well too. So let's do that next. Undo the drain plug with an Allen key, and then you have to actually pull it out at the same time, otherwise you'll strip it. And we just used a hose clamp, just our, our channel lock pliers and disconnected the, the bottom hose from the radiator. And we'll let the sucker drain out, and then we'll work on taking it out from the top. Also, we gotta pop up these clips here. For the fan, you just pop it out and then that'll help us get the radiator out easier. Next up, we're gonna get this hose clamp off. I found it best to use channel locks, good ones. We'll move this back, get out of the way, and then this should pop off. I'm gonna hold it up that way gonna lose any more coolant and all goes down where it's supposed to go. So. so I think this is the steam vent here. And this is the overflow to the coolant fill reservoir. A seven millimeter bolt that's down there can't really get a good zoom on it there, maybe. So I just got a seven millimeter bolt on the end of a screwdriver with a three eighths drive and I could just wiggle my hand down there to get it. Since this is still somewhat of a street car, um, you also want to lift up the AC condenser off of the radiator and that should be the last thing holding it in, I think. So uh, yeah, this is what a lot of years of driving 123,000 miles will do to a radiator. That probably didn't help us out at all. But as you can see, this radiator is really thin, really thin. So uh, now that we got it out, I was able to get it out with the fan and everything. You just gotta pull the fan up, push it down, pull this up, push it down, unhook everything to get it to all work, but it works. Uh, so now we'll take a look at the new DeWitt's radiator. All right, so this is our old radiator. As I showed you before, it's old, it's nasty, and it's not that thick. So, I'll show you the new one that I got. This radiator, the DeWitt's one, is significantly thicker, but at the top, it really only, I'll show you. It 
really is about the same size of, of, of either side. You just have a lot more area for the coolant to pass through. Now this one is, DeWitt sells a bunch of different radiators for a bunch of different applications. This one is specifically designed for this car, and this has a built-in oil cooler, and it already came with two 10 a.m. Uh, uh, plugs for that. So everything else in this car, on this radiator, will go in just as the old one did, but I now have an extra spot for the oil cooler that's built into this. So that's going to help me keep my coolant temperatures down and my oil temps down because they got really high on the track. So just because we're here already, I hit this with a little brush and a vacuum just to clean up the condenser. Just wanted to have as much free airways as possible. All right, so lining this up back in, this has to slide over and down onto the lockers. Also, I'll show you down here. There is a grommet that was on the old radiator that you wanna make sure you take off and put on. Otherwise this thing will be rattling like crazy. And then there's one on that side. I still gotta align it once everything's on. Um, but that grommet there, uh, if you don't have that, this thing's gonna rattle and it's gonna rattle like crazy. So make sure you get that grommet off of the bottom of the old radiator to put it on. Now, obviously when you're dealing with an aftermarket radiator, even it's a company like DeWitt's that has everything down to the tabs perfectly lining up, not everything's gonna be perfect. So I just had to notch this out just there, just so I can get the fins to turn over on that. And then on the other side where the oil cooler is, um, I mean, I haven't put the 10 AN on there yet, but I have a feeling um, that's not gonna clear so I'll just have to cut around this a little bit with an exacto knife it's plastic it's not going anywhere but other than that the fit of it is pretty good so I'll take it really sucks to get it in off, you know on camera so we had to do some of it off camera but she's in uh like I said I had I'm gonna have to trim that a little bit and had to trim that there and then I'll show you what I had to do on the top here in case you guys are wondering, this is like a quick and easy peel on, peel off shrink wrap that I got for the Corvette. Um, it protects it from scratches and stuff and it's just easily peel it right off and keeps everything nice. You wanna, obviously you wanna make sure it's a clean surface underneath it, but uh, it peels right off and helps with nicks and scratches. I'll put a link to it in the description below. I got a whole giant roll of this stuff on Amazon. All right, so with the radiator back installed, finished up buttoning up the bottom. Now we just gotta do the top. A couple of quick notes. Um, this tab here that goes, that fits over top, really couldn't get it in. It was really difficult to get in, so I ended up just snipping the bottom of it just to get the tab in, and then I'm probably gonna end up, I'm gonna end up just zip tying this to this to kind of pinch the whole shroud together in two spots because it just doesn't wanna go in where it was. Also, there's two bolts that we did down here that go into the shroud um, that connect, that hold it to the radiator. If you put those back in all the way, you're gonna, you're gonna, it's gonna go right into the radiator. So I ended up not you reusing those at all. And I'm just gonna zip tie the shroud together like that. That should work out okay. Also, um, the, the outlets and the inlets on the radiator are just, a, I feel like they're just a little bit bigger because I couldn't get the old hose clamps back on, which at the end of the day, these things suck to take on and off. So I just got a generic hose clamp that I'm gonna to use to put it back on. It'll make everything easier coming on and off and it'll fit better too because this really couldn't go over the, over the top of that thing. So we're gonna do that now. All right, so the radiator's in. I wanted to show it to you guys before I put the shroud back on, but that's it there. Got to button up the rest of the car. I replaced the oil pressure sending unit because that was a uh, potential leak spot. I don't know if the car's actually leaking from there, but I think I might need a new oil pan. It sucks. But, or a new oil pan gasket. But that radiator looks really nice. I'm almost half tempted not to put the shroud on, but I do know the cooling, uh, you know, potentially the, the cooling benefits you get by having the shroud on there. So I am gonna put it back on. Um, if you guys are interested in seeing more stuff about the Corvette, I'm gonna do a bunch more videos on it. Got an exhaust coming uh, that's gonna go from the uh, headers back to the stock exhaust. I have to keep the decibel limit on it under 88 because I go to Lime Rock, but Stay tuned guys, because I'm gonna test to show you guys how an eBay uh, cutout kit works on this. And I'm gonna try to do that too, because I still wanna have some fun and have it a little bit louder. So thank you guys very much for watching and I'll catch you in the next one.